What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy you're here with me for another episode of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. It is a wonderful day full of all kinds of amazing energies. And I'm really hyped up today. So if you notice that things may be a little different, that's cool. Don't worry about it. It's just me and my excitement and my joy of everything that is here. And that excitement and that joy is bringing me to a topic that maybe you might not look at as being very joyful or very exciting. I hate regrets those nasty regrets and how they keep controlling us. We've got a lot to talk about today and I've got so many different ways to look at it and things that we can chat about. And I would love it if you would like to come on over to the Inspired Choices Network forward slash chat room and join us if, if you would like to be part of the conversation. So we have... Hmm, Oh, yeah, we've got so many different information and things coming through. So my name's Karen Leslie. And for those of you, maybe that this is your first show with me or you're just kind of learning a little bit about myself. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being live with me. Or if it's your first time catching me on a replay. Thank you so much. It's your energy that really I pick up on as I'm doing my shows. And I get a sense of what it is that you would like me to be talking about. And regrets was something that came up very, very strongly a little while ago. And I was starting to notice it with some of my clients and a few things that were starting to happen. So when I pick up on information like this, I'm very intuitive. I, I'm an energy worker. I'm an expert energy healer. I have my own private client uh, practice as well. And then I do a number of different things for group work also. And I can chat more about that later. But all of this is to say that it is you that brings forward the information, whether it's energetic or you send me an email or message me through social media, but it's when I pick up on these this information that I get the idea for what to do for a show. And yeah, okay, so it's all of you that are looking at what's going on in your life and thinking, mm, this may not be exactly what I want, or this may not be what I thought I signed up for. And energetically, I'm aware. And then I come on here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen and talk about all kinds of different topics to help you and assist you to maybe bring some new information, to bring a new way of looking at things, um, maybe to challenge you a little bit as to how you are looking at something or whether you're a little stuck in maybe, I don't know, victim role or blame or something that's not helping you to move forward and be that brilliant person. Yeah, brilliant person that is inside you that maybe is having trouble coming out. And regrets is such a big part of that. Let me tell you, the more I learn about the brain and the mind, the more I learn sort of the chemistry and at the energetics and just sort of kind of follow whatever it is that's catching my attention. I'm coming to think that the mind really loves to hold on to negative stuff. You know, last week, if you caught my show, and if you didn't, go back and listen. Um, this may sound boastful, okay, but it was a really good show. There was some really good information um, on our thought processes. And I was mentioning that at a minimum, we have, 60,000 thoughts a day. Now, if that's not eye-opening enough, we have 90% of our thoughts being repetitive. No, sorry, 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. 
and 80% of those thoughts are negative, right? So you can see why I'm thinking, yeah, the, the mind, it loves to hold on to these sad, depressing, judgmental, sometimes debilitating ways of thinking. And you know what, guys? Time to stop. I'm sorry. I've had enough of my mind functioning in that pattern. So I'm working really hard on shifting to have more positive thoughts. I'll take all those repetitive thoughts if they're ones that are a contribution to me. So I'm working on all of that. And as I progress and as I learn new things, I share it with you. And that's a big part of of my business is experiencing things, trying to make sense of them, working with it for myself, and then sharing it with you, explaining it as best I can, and then working with you. So all of these thoughts, so many of them, and they're holding us stuck. They're creating limitations. And when we are in that pattern, it becomes the norm, right? None of us were aware that we had so many repetitive thoughts and so many negative thoughts because they're normal. So let's change that. And let's look at regrets today, right? Now, I love the etymology and old dictionaries, and I often go and look up things with them and try and understand more about the words that I'm dealing with. And regret in the etymology, it wasn't actually even in the dictionary I use, which is, I can't remember the date right now, 18, 1846 maybe or something. Anyways, it's, it's quite old. Um, but the etymology of the word regrets talked about sorrow grieving, longing, and it had these very powerful words in it. And I thought, okay, it had a stronger energetic component to it than I was expecting. And so with that, it was, okay, how do I look at what we might want to do with this word regret and these regrets that we are carrying with us? And I was really uh, attracted to the word grief and grieving. And back in end of June, June 28th, I think it was 2023, um, I did a show with the lovely Tammy Adams, and we had a, a wonderful conversation on grief. And Tammy was saying that grief is unresolved emotions makes perfect sense to me. If if it doesn't, go into where you have your podcasts and look into um, the recordings and find the show on grief with Tammy Adams and have a listen. And then when I was thinking about unresolved emotions, regrets took on a whole new light for me, a whole new way of looking at them. I've often thought of regrets as uh, carrying the emotion of feeling guilty. It certainly carries an emotion of judgment, self-judgment primarily, but you can also be, a, you know, judging others. And then, you know, Tammy's words came back, unresolved emotions. And I thought, yes, that is the core of regret as well. We hold on to these unresolved emotions keeping this in place, feeding that neural network that we have going on in our brain to keep bringing back over and over and over again these same thoughts, these same emotions, the, the, the guilt, the shame, the sadness, the despair, whatever it might be, the anger that might be there with these regrets. So I think it's pretty plain. I think it's pretty clear that, hey, <laughs> these need to go. We need to start rebuilding new neural pathways and working with things in a different fashion. So how do we do that? 
And we're going to talk a lot about this as we go through the show today. But before we get into some of that, I want to talk a, a little bit about today, what the day is. We are August 16, 2023, and we have a new moon in the Northern Hemisphere. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how that works in the Southern Hemisphere, if we're the same or if we go opposite. I'll have to look into that. But here we had a new moon very early this morning. And a new moon is always a time where we will wipe the slate clean. We've got this opportunity to let go of what's not working for us anymore. And then to, to set forward what it is we would like to have. So what better day to look at letting go of regrets than on a new moon where energetically you have a ton of support here with you right now to assist you in letting them go, in understanding them, and please not going into judgment. Now, you've even got energetic support here from the planets to help you not go into judgment as well, because this is a new moon in Leo, and Venus, along with five other planets, are in retrograde. And so between Venus and um, Leo, there's this gorgeous energy of self, of love, of support, of doing inner work and really connecting to what is true for you from your heart, not your brain, not your mind, but your heart. And I was talking with a client about this yesterday and saying, you know, like utilize the energies tomorrow, work with them to help you with the topic we were chatting about. And when I was talking about the heart and connecting into it and knowing what's true for her in her heart, I recognized that that was a difficulty, that the concept I was speaking about was a little bit foreign to her. And I do talk a lot about reconnecting to our bodies. Because when we get stressed, when we go into difficult times, when we have that thought come back about something we are regretful about, we disconnect from the body. We go to the mind we, and we look for the answer or the what to do next or how do I cope with this from a logic perspective. We go to the mind. Now, I'm starting to think, too, that the mind ain't so logical. Like, why keep bringing back all this old stuff? But anyways, I mean, I do get it. It likes to keep us safe and it likes to keep things in the same patterns. That's its logic. So, yes, OK, it is logical. But every now and then it, it does mess with the way I think of things. So when I was suggesting, you know, how to connect into your heart, how to Know what your yes is, know what your no is. And for some people, that's really simple and easy to do. And if you are, from a human design perspective, a generator or a manifesting generator that's not an emotional authority, then you'll you'll get it pretty clear. But there was something else going on for this person. And then I recognized that a, a majority of the day, for the majority of the past 20 plus years, this person had been living under uh, what her body interpreted as threat. Now, was she in harm's way? Was she in danger of dying or being murdered or harmed in any way? No, but her body energetically was picking up on information from another person that moved the body, like she literally would go back, move the body into this protection mode for fear of impending threat. So when you spend that period of time, like all of that time together, under that influence of that threat energy, then it made so much sense to me that what I was asking her to do or the concept I was bringing to her attention was really difficult and it wasn't going to work. So for those of you who, who you know, 
hear me say, oh, connect back to your body, find your yes, find your no. I mean, for some, that's going to be easy. For some of you, that will not be easy. And I'm gaining new understanding on this. Again, something new to share with you. So I'm happy to work with you on it. I'm happy to teach you different ways on how to reconnect. But this is what I suggested yesterday. And I'll, I'll go through this, and then we're going to go to our, our first break. So what I um, offered, what I suggested, was for her to watch her body. Just pay attention to the body. See how the body is moving, functioning, feeling, sensing, how it looks, what your posture is like, as often as you can during the day or evening, during waking hours. We'll go that way. And when you notice something, I was saying, okay, so if you notice that, you know, your, your shoulders are going up or that you're backing away from something or that you start to feeling heaviness or things like that wasn't overly easy, but noticing that words were not coming out, that your mind couldn't put together the sentence for you to speak out that you would like to have said in that moment when sort of confusion or chaos um, kicks in internally for you. Pay attention to that. Make note of it. Engage your brain and saying, okay, see this? Take note of this and engage your mind saying, okay, remember, show this to me again and give it the job of collecting the data for you. And then you do the same thing with uh, the other experiences that may be more pleasurable or fun or exciting. Like, when do you actually feel there's no tension across the back of your shoulders or at the back of your neck? When do you notice that you're, you're leaning in because you're interested and you feel safe versus backing away? You know, taking note of that whole other side as well and collecting information. Just data. You don't judge it. You don't do anything with it. You collect it up. And then you can work with what you have discovered as to when your body does something. What does that mean? And is it a contribution to you or not? And that will be another way to start to look to find when your body's saying yes to something or when it's saying, uh uh, no, and it wants to retreat or go in a different direction. So I hope that makes sense. If not, well, you can always send me an email, karen at karenlesley.ca, and I uh, would love to have a chat with you. And you can go to my website as well, which is karenlesley.ca, and through there, you can book a discovery call with me. We have, can have 30 minutes of time together just to chat, and maybe I can answer a few questions or see you know, if you'd like to work with me. So we're going to go to our break now. Pay attention to how your body is right now. Whether you're sitting, standing, lying down, how does it feel? What's its posture? Where are your shoulders? Are your arms crossed? And gather that data while you listen to a couple of commercials. We won't be long, so don't go away, and we'll be right back. All right, thanks, everyone. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. 
Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. So, did you check in with your body while we were on the break? Did you get some information? Did you collect a little data as to... Is it feeling good? Is it not feeling so great? And kind of what's going on around with you? I would highly encourage you to try this. Check it out. You know, maybe for a couple of days, maybe for a week. See what you can discover about yourself and your body. The more information we have about how our body functions, and I don't mean, you know, all the organs inside and the nervous system and things. Yeah, I mean, sure, that's helpful, but I'm looking at it more from an automatic perspective. And yes, I tell you not to go into autopilot. That's more from an awareness perspective, but just watch your body as to what it just naturally does, how it ebbs and flows with different circumstances. And then pay attention as to was that a situation or a circumstance that made you feel happier or lighter? It was a contribution to you somehow or the opposite. Right? See how your body feels before you go to do something for another person or after you have finished doing something for somebody else. Right? And you will gain really good insight into your body. And this will help you with any of these regrets that you may be carrying. I mean, what is a regret anyways, right? I mean, I didn't even think about talking about that in the first segment. So it's. You know, to me, a regret is something that brings forward a non-positive emotion about an action. Maybe that's the best way to put it. So a regret can be feeling poorly about something that I didn't do or something that I did do, something I didn't say or something I did say. And, you know, it can even be not saying something to myself. So you've got a number of ways that a regret can come forward for you. But basically or generally speaking, you've got some kind of, we use the word negative here. I don't use it too often, but negative emotion or some kind of emotion that's not contributing to you in a positive way that's making you feel poorly about yourself and possibly a situation you were part of. I personally have found over the years with, especially with the anxiety disorder, um, I had a lot of regrets for things I did not do, more so than I did for the ones from something I did. Because I often chose not to do things. I chose to withdraw. I chose not to speak. I chose not to be myself. I chose not to share any vulnerability. And then as a result of these things I chose not to do, then there would be a series of circumstances, situations, comments, whatever, that would follow that choice of mine. That would generally allow me to not regret in that moment my choice to not say something and focus in on what that person said, often going into self-judgment because I would feel poorly in response to their comment. It was this never-ending loop or spiral that was always pulling me down. So maybe you have experienced something like that. Then we can have regrets from an action we took. (laughs) Here's one that comes to mind. Those of you who love dogs, you'll understand. And please don't think harshly of me because I regretted this action for a long time. So we have we've had multiple dogs, always huskies. And oh, my goodness, we had this amazing one called Chinook. 
he was gorgeous and big and woolly and 85 pounds and just an amazing animal. But I got really angry at him one day. And I there was a, a boot um, on the floor. He was outside. There was a boot by the sliding glass door. And out of anger and frustration, I picked it up and I threw it at him. Didn't hit him. I had no intentions of hitting him, but I did not hit him, thank God, because I think I would have felt, oh, it would have been devastating for me. But it was a reaction out of anger and frustration. And I regretted that for years. And yet, oh, it makes me even teary now. Wow, I've still got some work to do on that. But what I saw and what I picked up on was his energetic instant shift when I threw the boot. I saw his eyes and I felt his energy like he was so, he, he was shocked. He was upset. It, it was like he was he was sad. He didn't understand why I would react that way towards him. And I took on regret. That's how fast it can happen. And it can be energetic. You pick up on something, you react, then you regret the reaction. Happens in a heartbeat. But you can carry it for your life unless you're willing to go back to it, revisit, and let it go. And understand, like when I went through it and understood what was behind that action, reaction, from my perspective, where was I at then? What was I going through? And recognizing the role that our dog played in that. And breaking that apart so that I could then come to the place of forgiving myself. And forgiveness for a lot of our regrets is key. To be able to forgive and then fill in the blank, whatever it's going to be, in order for you to help start releasing that energy of the regret. To forgive yourself for not doing an action. Or forgiving yourself for what you may have said or done. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit heavy. Um, and I, I understand that. But it's really important that you kind of, not kind of, that you get what is wrapped up into these regrets. And they are your perception of what happened. A hundred percent your perception. And how you've classified it or categorized it. And then it's gotten logged into that library of thoughts in your mind. Everything we do, everything we think, how we look at something is all colored by, shaped by, formed by our perception and our beliefs. Now, if I didn't love my dog as much as I did, I probably would not have had the same emotional response of being so sad with what I had done by throwing that boot. So there's part of the circumstances, part of looking at myself and understanding my reaction, understanding the depth of the regret that I carried. This is important for you as well. So if you bring to mind right now one thing that you are regretful for and you look at it and think all right so what were the circumstances around that how was I viewing this situation how was I looking at what was happening or not happening all right and then allow yourself to be that vulnerable observer watching you and looking at what is happening. Allow yourself to observe who you were in that moment without judgment. Allow yourself to observe the thoughts and feelings and emotions that came forward. And then allow yourself to observe how you are after it has concluded. When you look from those three different perspectives, 
in all openness and without being in that place to judge any part of it, you will gain so much information. Now, there's a strong likelihood that some of that information is going to take you towards another regret or another action or inaction because they will be linked together because there's this energetic thread that flows through many of our regrets that brings us to bringing on and going into the energy of having a new one. They are so tied together very, very often for most people. So that can be tough. I would love to help you with it. Working with trauma or forgiveness and coming out of judgment and maybe conflict resolution uh, within yourself and and another person, not that they're there energetically, we do this. Um, Let me know if you'd like to work with me on any of that. This propensity that we have to carry these regrets with us is very limiting. It's harmful. It creates a chemistry in your body that's not healthy. And it continues to put you in that space of taking on more regrets. So on that happy note, (laughs) all right, we're going to go for another break. When we come back, Let's look at how do we get out of this cycle? What do we need to do so that we stop this energy flowing through that is giving us that propensity towards having another regret about something else that comes up in our life, right? You're here with me, Karen Leslie, your host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And of course, we are here every Wednesday on the Inspired Choices Network. So, Don't go away. We won't be long with our commercials and we'll carry on this conversation when we get back. All right, everyone. See you soon. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad you're still here with me. This is a bit of a heavy conversation all about regrets, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel, so don't worry. We can work through them. I can help you. You can find other people to help you, but you truly can get to that place where you can have no regrets about anything. I know, sounds ridiculous, right? Because we've had regrets our whole life, but we can do it. Am I there yet? Uh, No, (laughs) I'm not. Am I in a far better place than I used to be with them? Yes, but I still have some work to do. I... Do I still have regrets to let go? I got a little bit to work on with Chinook. We we just found that out in the last segment. Um, But generally, I think I am in a really good place with past regrets that I was carrying. 
So how did I do that? Well, before we went on our break, if you remember, or if you just joined us, you'll need to go back and listen from the beginning, actually. But going and having that honest, without judgment, vulnerable look at one of the situations or, or something you have a regret about and looking at it from that perspective of just gathering information. That's it. Right. As if you were watching a character in a movie to saying, OK, what are they doing? What are they saying? How are they reacting? OK. And lining it all up. And when we can look at ourselves that way from a place of non-judgment. And non-judgment does not mean it's from a space of being loving. From my perspective, those are different. And I know some people will say to look at it, you know, your, your inner child or to look at the space and to bring love forward and all that. Sometimes for some people, that's adding in more of a burden and something extra that they aren't comfortable with or, or maybe struggling with. I'm asking you just to try and be neutral. Just neutral. Right? When we can get to that place, then we can look at our choices and our decisions and have a better perspective on which ones are working for us and which ones aren't. Right? It is going to come back to connecting into your body as well and knowing what works for your body because you're it's an intricate, delicate, and important system working mind and body and awareness and then inviting in the heart. When we can be non-judgmental with something, then that gains us a new perspective on what we are seeing. In order to be non-judgmental, you need to be able to let go of a belief or maybe many beliefs. Beliefs. <laughs> that was not so easy to say. Right? This pattern of thought that you have been holding on to that has contributed to you feeling that regret. Because you're judging something. You're judging you. You're judging something you did or something you did not do. When we can come out of that judgment and look at it, understand what our wound was, what was coming forward that had us react or, or be in that fashion, then we can look at that belief that caused it. And then we can work on, if we would like, to change that belief so that it no longer elicits that reaction from us. So if you didn't like the reaction you gave or had, then you have to look at changing what caused it, what's behind it, what was holding that in place. And that is your belief patterns, your thought patterns. So you want to become non-judgmental. You want to have that open-minded way of looking at something. And as you build that muscle and you build that new perspective, of looking at everything, really. That's, for me, the ultimate goal, looking at everything from a place where I don't have a point of view about it. I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm feeling, I'm sensing. I know what my body is doing, how it's reacting. And I'm gathering all of this information. And then I can choose how I wish to respond. Creating that space. And as you get used to it and you and you develop it more as, as an automatic skill, it happens faster and faster. And you don't have to, you know, like kind of just say, okay, hold on, everybody. Let me think about this. Even if you say that in your head. But initially, you might need to take a little extra time to center and pause. And then it gets easier and easier. And you become this person that has less judgment, less uh, a tight hold on a belief or a perspective that allows you to see things 
from a different way. And then when you are looking at it with all of this information and you make your choice, whatever that is, regardless as to how it turns out, regardless as to somebody else's response or reaction to you, you will be totally fine in that choice you made. And from that space, you will not take anything on as a regret. I mean, doesn't that sound amazing? To not be put yourself in those positions where that energy of regret grabs you? I think it sounds fabulous, but you can do it. You can totally do it. It takes some practice. It takes some dedication. Sure. What new pattern, new habit doesn't? And it's so worth it. This energy of regret, because it can be so tied into shame. And that is such a heavy frequency. It's a really difficult one for many people to work out from under when they're carrying shame. So if we can let go of regrets and and move ourselves into that energy or that place of living where we don't take them on anymore, then we have the opportunity to not bring forward or not take on additionally all of those lower energies. You have the ability to create from a space you've never stood in before. You have the ability to see the world from a brand new perspective. And that can create so much for you. And to be in that space, like today on the new moon, where this is the time frame where we want to be setting our intentions, our wishes for what we would like to have come through in the next four weeks. And if we can do that from that place of non-judgment, don't criticize yourself, tapping into your heart, because that becomes easier and easier when these other energies are let go of. And you know what it is you want to have in your life, then you have a greater opportunity to actually manifesting it and bringing it forward. There's a a saying, um, if you believe it, you can achieve it. I think that's how it goes. The opposite is also true. If you don't believe it, you can't achieve it. So if you're carrying regrets, about something and and you want to bring forward into your life something better that is attached to that circumstance, that situation, that person, whatever it is that that regret is anchored into. If you haven't let go of that anchor. Then you truly don't fully energetically believe that you can achieve that goal, that desire, that wish. So the chances of it coming forward, extraordinarily small, extraordinarily small. And then we kind of wonder why manifesting doesn't work well for a lot of people. Well, this is one part of it. There's more, but that's one part of it. So how to wrap this up? It it all comes down to Are you willing to see yourself from a non-judgmental place? That may show you a lot more bumps and bruises and warts and cuts than you might expect. May not, but it can. And are you also willing to see the beauty, the brilliance, the vibrancy, those energies that have been not as comfortable, as frequent, as free-flowing because of the flip side. And even sometimes seeing those wonderful sides of us, that can be uncomfortable. That can close us down because the mind goes, whoa, I'm not sure that's true. And it'll throw other thoughts at you. But when you can find that sweet spot, It gives you so much opportunity to shift what is not working for you and to bring in what you truly 
desire, your true heart's desire. And let me tell you, when you're working from your true heart, regret is not there. It is not. Shame is not there. When you can be confident in your 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 choice, even if it falls flat, even if you, I don't know, something really awful happens. If you believe in yourself and to why you made that choice, then you're going to be able to be in that space and say, all right, so that was a real mess up. Okay, didn't turn out how I thought it was going to turn out. So what's required now? And you don't go into any form of regret. It's like, all right, cool. What's next? This or something better, right? And you give yourself that opportunity to change it. All right. We are going to go to our third and final break now. Thank you for being here with me and exploring this um, a little more complicated conversation on regret than I think probably most of you thought we were going to get into. I suspect that many were like, okay, we all have regrets, so just teach me how to get rid of it. Easy, right? Not so easy, but totally, totally doable. And I know you can do it. So give this some thought. What would you like to change? How do you want to move forward? Again, on this new moon day, don't Please, please, please do not go into what you do not want. No, stop there. Capital S-T-O-P. Stop. It is key that you look at the things that you wish to bring into your life. Do not use that energy of regret. And that is part of that energy of what you do not want. That energy of regret gets tangled in there. What would you like to have? Who would you like to be? Where would you like to go? So all those lovely positive questions, think about those while we go to our break. And we'll be back on the Inspired Choices Network. And we'll wrap up how to look at all of this when we come back after these commercials. So don't go away. We won't be long. Thank you. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are in our final segment here. Like, this always amazes me. There's so much information on every topic that I bring to you every week. And I hope, I really do, I, I, I sincerely hope that I'm giving you enough information that you leave every show thinking, oh, okay, there's something new, or there's something I can do, or, oh, I'd like to Maybe visit that topic a little bit more. Sometimes I may be giving you that uh, ending feeling of, oh, I've got a lot of work. Regardless as to which way it goes, it's never wrong. And I, please, I do not want you to go into any judgment about it. Each week, it is my goal, my target to impart something new to you, to bring in some new information, a different way of looking at something, and then some some helpful hints or some tools or something that you can take away and work with to make the changes so that you empower yourself, that you step more and more into who you are and less 
into who you have been. So even if you love you, even if you think, you know, I really love what's going on in my life and what I'm doing, you can still move forward into more, into greater, into areas you have yet to have any knowledge or information on. And how exciting can that be? There's always more for every single one of us. So if there's been any shows in particular, too, that you've really liked, you've enjoyed, I would love it if you would like it or write a review and post anything on where you uh, listen to your podcasts um, or share it with a friend. Send it to them and suggest that they listen, that maybe there's something in that show that can help them in a similar way that it might have helped you. And that all helps keeping Cultivating Kindness with Karen going and inspiring me and giving me more information for creating a show every week for you. So next week, before I forget, the show is called Leveraging Alignment. Hmm. It'll be interesting. I've already got all kinds of things floating around about it. So join me next week if you would like to understand a little bit more about leveraging alignment. And I know we use the word alignment a lot. And how I explain things, like most of my shows, will probably give you a different perspective on it. All right. So this whole idea of regret. I, I really hope you have the idea now that it's not something that you need to hold on to. It's a pattern, truly an energetic pattern. It's not that you've done something wrong. It's based on, you know, programming, uh, beliefs you were given, just, you know, kind of how you were brought up. Uh, some of the influential people as you got older in your life that, you know, um, really instilled a strong belief within you. And we wrap all of these different influences together and it sets us up to have regrets because we we go against somehow, some way, something we believe in, either by, as I said, by doing something or not doing something that we felt now, oh, I really regret that. The regret only happens because of that strong belief or that way of looking at something or that automatic reaction that you had that triggered uh, an anger or some other emotion that just burst forward. And we'll get those. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, it's not that I will never not be angry again at a dog. It's bound to happen. But how I respond after the fact how I'm able to apologize, how I'm able to look at my role in it will be, well, is very different. And yours can be very different if you would like it to be. And it's all a choice, right? Which is one of the reasons I love the name of this network, Inspired Choices Network, right? Because everything is a choice, but we forget that it is. Because we just go on autopilot. We get so hung up on what we believe and how we have to be right and how we're afraid to be wrong. And it, we are so set up to carry regrets. Little ones, big ones, even devastating ones. And that is truly being unkind to ourselves, And potentially unkind to another person who may be involved in that situation. It is super important for us to have a more global, more observer way of looking at this and looking at ourself. And when we do that, we can have a greater space of kindness. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. 
Until next Wednesday, Garrett is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.